I don't know what the flip that was. Anyways, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to turn yourself into the New 52 version of the Joker. So I'm really excited about this because I've done the New 52 Joker on my other channel. I wanted to see one video last year and I decided that I wanted to redo it because I really love the way the Joker looks in New 52. And I mean, he's not my favorite Joker ever, but I like the way that he looks. So I wanted to recreate it and um, redo it using a little bit more FX makeup. I'm also excited about this because this is the first Joker I've done on this channel. And trust me, there's going to be way more Jokers. Joker is my favorite villain. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. It's going to be a long one. I know that because I'm going to have to cover the mouth area and then painting it all. But yeah, that's what's going to happen if you want the tutorial to be thorough. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, please give it a thumbs up if you like it. And now let's begin. Off by saying I'm sorry if this tutorial is a little bit long it's gonna be long because it's a very detailed look so the first thing I decided to do was use play-doh to make my chin look longer like the Joker I take the play-doh and mold it into the shape I wanted then I apply liquid latex to the inside of the prosthetic and on my chin and after about 30 seconds of letting the latex dry I apply the prosthetic onto my chin use the latex to blend the prosthetic into the skin you just apply the latex over the edges of the chin Chin and onto the chin itself. I didn't make it too long because Play-Doh isn't going to work ideally as a prosthetic. It weighs more so I didn't want to make the chin too long because if it was too long it would weigh more and then fall off of the skin. So, uh, personally I don't know how to make prosthetics so this was the best alternative I had to a prosthetic because I don't know how to make them. Now apply liquid latex to your skin in the shape of the Joker's mouth. You're going to use tissue or toilet paper to build up the mouth. Apply a few layers of liquid latex on your skin and when you got a nice layer, you're going to put some tissue over the latex. Then apply latex on top of the tissue. Just roll the tissue to create the mouth shape you need. Make sure the latex on top of the tissue blends into your skin. And make sure the inner corner of your mouth, you apply a thick layer of latex there to mimic the inside of a mouth. Moving on to the teeth. Now I bought these fake teeth from Amazon. You can paint your teeth on if you like, but these teeth I got, they look really realistic, so I decided to use them. If you plan on using fake teeth, you're going to apply a line of liquid latex above your top lip and on your lower lip. Then apply liquid latex to the back of each tooth. Once you wait a few seconds for the latex to dry, you can adhere the tooth to your skin. You gotta wait for the latex to get a little dry because if you try to stick the tooth to your skin when the latex is still wet, the tooth won't stick. After you've got your teeth on, apply liquid latex above each tooth, then take tissue and roll it into little snake shapes that you will apply just above the tooth and below the bottom teeth to look like gums. After you've got the tissue on, apply liquid latex over the tissue to help blend it in. To add some flesh-like texture to the inside of the mouth, apply liquid latex over the skin around the teeth using a coarse paintbrush. The coarseness adds texture to the skin. Okay, now you're going to take the liquid latex and start creating the ripped skin around the face. You might want to apply the latex in layers to create a nice thickness to it. You don't have to if you don't want to. I mean, you can do it in thin layers. But liquid latex is much more easier to take off of your skin if you apply it in thicker layers because it's just easier to rip off. In thinner layers, it's a little harder to remove from the skin. While creating the ripped skin, I applied latex on my forehead to help give texture to the muscle fibers in that area. Now it's time to start painting. Use a red paint to paint the lips, inside corners of the mouth, and as a base color to the muscle fibers on top of the forehead. I mixed a little bit of orange into the red paint I used so it wasn't too vibrant. To paint the inside of the mouth and gums, I used a dark red paint that I mixed together using red and black. You'll end up using this darker color and the red color that you used to paint the mouth 
To paint the inside of the wound where the skin is opening up, you mainly use the darker red color on the edges of the wound that are touching where the skin's opening, and then you use the lighter red color to mainly paint the inside of the wound, so the very center of it. I wanted the teeth to look yellower like the Jokers. I wanted to yellow them up, so I just took some yellow paint and then I just applied that right over the teeth. Now it's time to start painting the skin. Before I painted the skin white, I used my white paint to outline where the eyes and pupils will be. I also needed to apply a white cream paint over my brows to help hide them. White paint alone won't do this, so I just applied the glue stick over my brows to lie my brow hairs flat, and then I go over the brows with a white cream paint. Once I've done that, I'm ready to paint my skin white. Remember, you bring that color down onto your neck and your ears as well. You got to add some shadows on the Joker skin if you want to make it look like a comic. So mix together a gray color and create shadows on the Joker skin. It's best to reference a picture to get an idea of where you might like to place the shadows and it's just easier to do it this way to copy a picture directly because then it ends up really looking like a comic book drawing. Now you're going to use a black paint to outline features on the face. So this includes the inside of the mouth, between the teeth, outline the mouth, thrips on the face. You do all of this if you're trying to recreate the comic book type of drawing of the Joker where you want it to look like it's actually a comic book drawing or like a cartoon drawing. If you want it to look more realistic then you don't do any of this outlining except for maybe just the inside where the teeth are because you don't want people to be able to see your real lips. Don't forget to outline your eyes as well. Now you're going to create wrinkles using the black paint. You especially want to create these wrinkles on the forehead and around the mouth. Again, it's best to reference a picture to see exactly where you want to paint on these wrinkles. But like I said, it's probably most important to create the wrinkles around the mouth so you can make it look like he's really grinning with his gigantic mouth. You also got to make these markings on the ears and the neck. Otherwise, it's just going to look really weird if your face has all these like black markings or wrinkles on them and then your neck is just white and your ears are just white. You just got to make it all look cohesive. I used the black paint to outline the teeth. Now, I didn't outline the entire tooth, like each individual tooth. I just applied black paint here and there on the outline of some of the teeth. If I did it on every single tooth, I thought that it would just take away from the realisticness of the teeth. Like, it looked really cool. So I didn't want to do that, but I wanted to outline them so it just matched the rest of the painting. I wanted it to look comic book style, but I just didn't want to totally take away from the awesomeness that are the, like, real teeth that I got. Because if I'm going to do that, then I might as well paint the teeth on. On the neck, I wanted some more intense shadows in that area, so I mixed together a darker gray color and I used that to create shadows on the neck as well, just because it's a bigger area of skin than the face, so I wanted just more depth there with the shadows. Now I mixed together a purplish red color that I used to paint the outer corner of each eye. I was copying a specific picture of the Joker and that's why I went with the purplish red tone. You don't have to do this at all. You don't even have to paint the, your eyes red right there. You can just go with black if you want to. I also use that color to start detailing where the muscle fibers are. Again, I copy a specific picture of the Joker where the muscle fibers are similar to this color, but you can make it look more realistic by using more of a pink tone for the muscle fibers, or you can make it look really comic book style by using like a vibrant red color. It's all up to you. Where the muscle is, you need to start detailing it so you can see more individual fibers. So you're just going to take your black paint and you're going to start creating those lines to make it look like muscle fibers. And then you need to highlight some of them so they really stand out. And to highlight, I used a tan paint. It was actually ivory from Wolf, so it's like a tan color. And I just used that to highlight the muscle fibers here and there. And then I do the exact same thing to the red portion of the eye. I just create these. It doesn't exactly look like muscle fibers. It's more like little lumpy looks to it. And then I highlight a little bit using the ivory color paint. Now it's time to paint the eyes. You're gonna use your black paint to outline the pupil and fill that area in. And then you're gonna paint one eye using white paint and gray to help like shade it a bit. 
and then you're going to paint the other eye using different tones of green paint and then black to paint the center of the eye. Um, it's not too complicated. For those of you that are new to my channel and are wondering why I just don't put contacts in my eyes, it's because I can't wear eye contacts, I have dry eyes, and I run the risk of ripping out my cornea because my eyes are so dry, so that's why I can't wear contacts. I say that a lot in my videos and my viewers know that, that are more frequent, but I have to repeat it a lot because um, people tend to ask that question a lot. Okay, now you're going to start painting where the buckle is, and you just want to use different tones of brown to make it have a lot of dimensions. So like a brown is the base color and then a lighter brown to highlight it. You paint the actual silver part of the buckle using white and gray paint. So you can use a silver paint if you want to, but the thing is, this is such a matte painting that I didn't want to add the silver because I felt like it would take away from it a bit. So I just used white and gray paints. Moving on to the suit, which is way, way easier to paint than the face. So basically you're going to take your white paint and you're going to use that as the base color for the name tag. So when you're painting the actual suit, you want to use, you can either use different tones of blue or you can use different tones of bluish gray colors. I did bluish gray colors because that's the color of the actual suit. It has like a bluish gray tone to it, but you want to use at least three different shades of whatever color you decide to use. So if you're using blue, you want to use a light medium and dark blue paint if you're using a bluish gray color you want to use a light medium and dark bluish gray color you will be applying these colors here and there so basically you take the medium color and you apply that as the base color but not everywhere and then you take the highlighting color and apply it here and there and then the shade you want to apply it here and there you just want all these different tones here and there to create that type of comic book style painting or drawing. You don't want it to be just a blue color because it's not going to look as cool and it's not going to create the dimension that you need. And then on one side of the suit, you're going to use black paint to create a very dark shadow on half of the suit. Again, it's best to reference a picture and I'll link down below the pictures I use as my references. And then for painting Joe, if you are going to take pictures, you have to paint the letters on backwards. Otherwise, it's going to photograph as Ioj. I think that's how you pronounce Joe backwards, but that's what it's going to look like. So you have to basically paint these letters on backwards if you're going to photograph it or videotape it. Um, so yeah, like right now, you can't tell that I painted this on backwards, but I did. It's a little hard to do this, but the awesome thing is the O. You don't have to paint backwards. A no is a no, backwards or forward, it doesn't matter. A no is a no. Anyways, you gotta start painting on the collar. So you just use your black paint to outline the collar and then to um, create some shading on there as well. I love painting collars on for some reason, just because I love to create shadows below them and make them look like they're more lifted. So yeah, you just take your black paint and you use it to create a shadow below the collar in the shape of the collar and you don't do it directly below the collar you want to make it a little bit um the shadow starting a little bit away from the outer edge of the collar in my opinion it really helps it look more lifted if you do this finally the last steps you're just going to paint your hair green you can use a temporary hairspray if you want to i ended up using face paint and then i used some brown paint to extend where the strap is into the hair to create the straps that are keeping the joker's mouth pulled open i actually used ponytail holders, elastic ponytail holders. I cut them up so that they fit my face and then I use liquid latex to glue them to my skin and to the inside of the mouth and then I just painted them using my white paint. It's up to you. You can even use like wire, thinner, thinner wire, but I think this is much safer than using wire. Then the final thing I did was paint the gloves. You just want to use a brown paint as the base color, add a little bit of a highlight in there by using a lighter brown paint color, and then you just use your black paint to create some shadows and outline your fingers. And there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. I'm so proud of this look. Like, I love it so much more the second time around. Uh, I just love creating Joker looks because the Joker is my absolute favorite villain. Anyways, with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.